novel coronavirus. The first case of coronavirus infection was reported in the Wuhan city of China. The disease appeared in the form of pneumonia and the causative agent was called novel coronavirus as this virus has not been previously recognized in humans. SARS outbreak in 2003 was also caused by viruses genetically related to novel coronavirus. World Health Organization on 11th February 2020 declared this infectious disease as a pandemic and the name COVID-19 or Coronavirus Disease 2019 was introduced. COVID-19 or Coronavirus Disease 2019 is caused by the virus called SARS-CoV-19 or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. Mild to moderate respiratory problems are the primary symptoms of this disease in most of the infected persons. Recovery usually takes place without any special treatment. But in older people and those with underlying medical issues like cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease and cancer, the condition may worsen and may lead to serious complications and finally death. In order to understand the mechanism of action of this novel coronavirus in human body, we should have some idea about the structure of this novel virus as well as about human respiratory system. Our respiratory system consists of a series of organs and divided into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. Upper respiratory tract consists of nostrils, pharynx and larynx. The parts below larynx are called lower respiratory tract which includes trachea, bronchi, bronchiolus, alveoli and lungs. Larynx leads to a large windpipe called trachea. Trachea branches to two bronchi. Bronchi enters the lungs and are further branched to tree like a structure called bronchiolus. Each bronchiolus ends at numerous sac like structures called alveoli. Airways in alveoli are flexible. Air passes freely through the respiratory tract and reaches alveoli. So the end points of the respiratory tracts are alveoli and this is the enlarged alveoli structure. Alveoli, the flexible sacs in our lungs inflates like a small balloon as we inhale and deflates as we exhale. The gas exchange is actually taking place in this alveoli. Alveoli are surrounded by the network of small blood capillaries. Oxygen in the air we breathe are transferred from alveoli to the blood capillaries and carbon dioxide from the capillaries is passed to alveoli and expelled out as we exhale. All our airways or respiratory tract are lined by mucus which keeps our respiratory tract always moist and it traps most of the invading pathogens. Beneath the mucus, fresh like cilia cells line our respiratory tract. Cilia cells beat continuously and push mucus towards airways and clear out germs that try to invade the respiratory system. Usually, entrapped pathogens are cuffed out along with mucus. This mucus and the cilia are the preferred cells of coronavirus. Structure of coronavirus Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, means they cannot live outside a host cell. They have to enter into the host cell to remain alive and to replicate. Viruses have a very simple structure. Coronaviruses 
are enveloped RNA viruses. The outermost part of this virus is a lipoprotein envelope with crown-like protruding protein spikes called peplomers. These crown-like peplomers act as the key to get attached to the host cells. Inner to this envelope is the protein core called the capsid. Capsid is made up of capsomeres. This capsid or protein coat protects the genetic material of the virus as it passes from one person to another. Inside this protein coat lies the genetic material of the virus which is RNA. It is the most important part of the virus which is essential for its existence and multiplication. The genome plus protein core of the virus is together known as nucleocapsid. How Coronavirus Causes Infection Viruses are released from infected persons as aerosols through coughing, sneezing, talking, etc. If we come in contact with these aerosols, viruses enter our respiratory tract. Inside our body, virus comes in contact with the nostrils, throat, trachea, lungs, bronchi, alveoli, etc. Healthy cell membranes contain receptors for the crown-like peplomers or spikes of coronaviruses and bind-like lock and key. Viruses thus gets into the cell. Usually, our immune system clear out these viruses and prevent them from reaching alveoli. But if our immune system is weak, the situation is different. In an immunologically debilitated person, virus progresses to three phases of attack. These include virus replication, hyperactivation of immune system, and finally pulmonary destruction. First stage of attack is coronavirus replication. The virus enters the respiratory tract as aerosols. As I already mentioned, the sites of attachment are the mucus and the cilia cells. These cells have got receptors for the peplomos of the coronavirus and the virus will get attached to the host cells. Once attached, viruses will introduce their genetic material safely into the host cell, then take up the control of host cell and host machinery will be utilized for the production of virus components. This replication begins, continues in the infected host cells and several copies of coronaviruses will be produced from infected cells. As an immune response to this increasing virus load, host sets up inflammatory response. Inflammation is a normal host defense mechanism and is usually confined to a particular area. But here, Inflammation leads to destruction than defense. Multiplication of virus in host thus leads to the second stage of attack, hyperreactivity of immune system. This overreaction leads to damage to our healthy tissues. Inflammation leads to accumulation of dead cells and debris in lungs. These processes considerably reduce the ability of lungs to oxygenate our blood. Also, hyperreactivity of immune system leads to cytokine storm. Actually, cytokines are immune cells recruited to the site of infection to neutralize the pathogens. But here, cytokine storm promote large-scale inflammation in our body, adversely affecting the host cells. The blood vessels become more permeable, leading to more fluid leakage in the body. Thus, blood and oxygen do not reach different parts of the body and it will lead to multi-organ failure. As more and more pulmonary cells are damaged and inflamed, it progresses to the third stage of disease that is called pulmonary destruction. Filling of alveoli by infiltrated fluid leads to bronchopneumonia affecting different parts of lungs. It may also lead to lobar pneumonia affecting certain lobes of the lung. This will lead to severe coughing 
labored breath, chest pain, fever, chills, confusion, fatigue, muscle pain, etc. Patients may need ventilators to support breathing at this stage. Sometimes, faults are produced in lungs due to hyperimmune responses and lungs attain a honeycomb appearance. Hyperimmune responses also create scars in the lungs that leads to stiffening of the organ. If this process goes beyond control, permanent damage will occur in lungs leading to respiratory arrest and death. This is how coronavirus causes death in humans.